Welcome to another episode of Course Heading. In this week's Course Heading, we're going to be talking about the newest episode of Lord X, I Excretus, I think. It's an iBorg reference, I, I think guess. so. Yeah. Um, yeah. Before we get into that, how are you doing this morning, Bill? Doing well. Excited to talk about this one. This one, there's there's a there's a ton to talk about. There's a lot. maybe it might be the most chock full of references yet. I think so. I think there's a lot to talk about and it's a busy episode. I'm excited to, to unpack it and cover it. Um, how are you doing? I'm doing great. A um, little bit of backstory on this. Uh, I usually watch it on Thursdays. I did watch it on Thursday when it was released. But we also watched it together uh, with uh, a Trek After Dark group last night. So it's this episode's really fresh. Um, I think you're right, Bill. It is, it is filled with um, references and deep 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 cuts uh but i think the benefit of watching it i don't usually do it until maybe after the season uh is over but um yeah i think uh watching it for a second time really uh like this show helped me um figure out where i stand with it so yeah yeah well what what kind of general takeaway do you have like did did you find it uh, there's a lot of chatter on twitter i think (laughs) calling yeah. it a real highlight and yeah. pretty high up on the list where do you where I'd do you stand with it it's probably top three for me uh maybe we'll get into rankings a little bit uh at the end of the season again but um yeah i uh it's a really solid one for me i um i like uh there's some good heart in it as, as well with them i feel like the crew coming together um it feels almost like an ensemble type of, and that's just kind of the way the episode is structured and what's going on in the episode is structured. It feels like an ensemble type of thing. Everybody has a yeah. lot to do. Um, but obviously there's some, um, I don't know, not hiccups, but just a little bit. Uh, there's some humor in it that uh, we kind of talked about last night. I think um, I, like a few episodes before, there was some other humor that was more shocking maybe, but this... Um, I don't know if it's where I'm just getting used to that type of humor or that type of um, thing I, I expect from the show. But um, yeah, overall, I'll reel it back in. Overall positive for this episode. Me too. I, I echo everything you said. You know, we, we definitely, I think, have come to expect a certain brand of humor from Lower Decks. I think it's finding its comfort zone and its its niche with uh, its its uh home field sense of humor and uh, where the show is most comfortable operating and um it's not just the show finding it it's the audience kind of you know meeting in the middle and being comfortable with the show existing in that form you know and i I definitely find myself going on that journey and uh getting more and more used to uh, the brand of humor the style of storytelling uh, as we've talked about many times here covering lower decks you know this is a whole new thing for track it's a, it's a new format it's a new genre it's a it's a new way of delivering uh the star trek goods and uh it's 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 uh becoming more and more comfortable by the week I, at least i i find myself um gaining that subjectively from my from my own experience but um this this one i, I think the ensemble is a great point i think uh somebody made a point last night when we were talking as a group uh on our server like you like you had mentioned that this might be the first time that we've seen the crew kind of operate as a whole like our lower decks uh yeah some along with our bridge crew yeah uh team uh kind of being forced into a situation where they have to work as a group and um there, there's some overlap with all four of them i think over the course of the episodes so far we we occasionally will get pairings like ransom and mariner or you know, obviously, like Doctor Ta and and Tendi, like they're they're pairings for sure. Um, but this this week really kind of threw it all together and mixed it up, and I, I like that a lot. I mean, we're coming down down the home stretch of season two. The show has existed for a little while now. We spent a lot of time with these characters, and it feels like a good time to to do that to throw all eight characters in a blender and you know put them in unexpected situations and pairings and all together and shake it up and see see what happens in this episode i definitely feel like did that and, uh, through the vehicle of you know many many references to 
you know, previous episodes and movies and <laughs> yeah, and Star Trek stuff. There's so much Star Trek stuff here. There's always Star Trek stuff in in Lower Decks. Obviously, this one part of the MO of the show feels amped up. This one a really, bit, though. it does. Yeah, yeah. The device of the the the, the holographic simulations uh, that are designed as like drills, uh, like training drills and evaluative That's, tools. That is just straight uh, references. In, yeah, <laughs> they're just straight. Yeah, they're, they're not making any bones about it. And what I like about it is I feel like in previous iterations uh they, they always make reference to like characters like janeway or harry kim and voyager or you know the, the characters of deep space nine being familiar with like the old missions like they know what kirk and crew they think of the, the episodes that we know of kind of the same way like they think of these old missions that they read about while they were in the academy and studied and like they know about kirk you know fighting the Goran on Cestus 3 Cisco uses that he throws that out there Janeway I think says it too so like these experiences that other crews have had these missions that they've gone on exist in the memories of these other officers uh centuries later as as like not episodes but as important historical events and so like seeing them used in this fashion feels right and makes sense the way that Star Trek has kind of, has kind of always treated it's continuity and yeah. you know things that have happened in previous shows with different crews so i love that about it and it, the way that it treats those and things. we're not referencing the actual person or the character we're not actually seeing their yeah. or seeing or hearing their voice or anything yes. like that it's the mission right. itself and it's just putting that yes. layer on the lower decks which i i love so yeah it's a really inventive way to kind of change it up and do that kind of thing give that flavor you know the the, the references and the 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 continuity candy without you know just using the imagery directly from an old episode and um specifically referencing characters and situations you know it's it's a I think a refreshing different take on that idea yeah but i i but it's still i like it true to it's it, it stays true to star trek and that they have to work together and trying to mm-hmm. it's going to solve this um not issue, but problem that came on the ship, which um, is a classic TO, or not TOS, but just Star Trek setup. Someone comes on yeah. the ship, and you have to, yeah, just all good stuff for sure. Um, yeah. Uh, really quick, one of my other favorite things uh, about this episode that I'm kind of noticing the past couple episodes is the character development that I'm seeing with Boimler. Uh, I think early um, season one stuff and maybe even early season two stuff of lower decks we he kind of stumbled through it felt like missions whereas i think now he's um it just feels like he's going for it and like i don't know the the one with um the computer thing on the on the on the planet that was just like going for it um he wasn't really stumbling he wasn't like like i feel like in the beginning of the season of season two he was like on he was going on missions with the titan but he was like just stumbling through it and he was the comedic relief of that but now he's like yeah it's a little bit different he's like the lead in the missions so I'm, i might be crazy um no but that's that's just what it feels like to me a little bit i, I definitely think they're charting a course for boimler to become more confident in his own skin have more faith in his own abilities and to know who he is i think that's been the journey all along i think he you know, had an idea of where he wanted to go, didn't know how he wanted to get there, didn't know how to how to deliver himself, like, to that final destination, in, in, uh, moving up in the ranks and, you know, finding a prestigious place to be. Uh, that, that, that was driving him from the beginning, but I think his experience changing ships, being around Mariner and, and, and company uh, who have kind of been on the other side, like, all these things are kind of coming together and giving him some perspective on, you know, how to do it. And I, I think he's he's been there done that he's seen the other side he, he went to the titan and served there and, and and i think that taught him a lot i think he's changed a lot from that experience and i think his experiences with mariner uh, from last season and this season have have you know taught him a lot and i think we're seeing that played out on screen we're not just seeing regurgitated notes with with his character uh he's he's definitely progressing like you said i think that's that's a really good point and one of the one of the most successful things in this show uh and even mariner i think had some development here you know one, one of the things this show has really leaned into i think from the beginning is seeing it from the perspective of the lower deckers we have kind of mixed opinions we have mariner who has been on the other side as well and has seen more advanced you know 
points in her career and has, has been in more prestigious jobs and has mixed feelings about, you know, what that is and how it is and what the value of living that life is. While we also have other characters who are very much eager to get there. And this episode puts all of those characters, the, the four lower deckers, in the positions where they have to operate as kind of bridge crew and get to see the complicated nature of it. And Mariner has a point in this where she's like, well, maybe it's not what I thought it was. And it, maybe it is harder than I thought and, you know, more complicated than I thought. Like there's, there's nuance going on with the way that these characters do their place on the Cerritos and in Starfleet. And, you know, that's, reassuring to see that's perspective right i, I yeah. think we you get perspective on each side's um kind of life and, and what it's what it's like to be uh sometimes it's not always as cracked up like it's it's i don't know it's just i don't know i like seeing the perspective and putting those characters in those situations um yeah I think all good stuff the way that even the bridge crew has to you know conduct lower deck business and live you know they have to walk that walk for a little bit and i think that hopefully will make the crew more cohesive and make it a better ship and make freeman a better captain and ransom a better first officer getting to see what day-to-day life even for a brief little you know wacky simulation looks like uh in in the lower decks Uh, so you know i i just like this episode did to the characters and what positions it put them into uh, as much as i liked the, the continuity candy that is like thrown at us and in such heavy doses like that's that stuff's great and i think you you hit your nail on the head on why i liked it so much i think because of the 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 kind of subverted way that they delivered it with it being more about the missions than the characters and the specifics um uh, but uh it's it's again with lower decks it's the characters and uh the the, the um the specifically new characters our crew uh, that really sells me on the show and keeps me keeps me going yeah, and and it's tough. To, I know, guys, it's tough to not focus on like the, the deep cut candy stuff that the references and all that. But I, I think to, to this episode, it's it is Star Trek. It is get get behind all the references and all that stuff and the continuity stuff. I think there is some really good stuff here, and it's tough to do, in twenty some odd minutes anyway. So I just, um, yeah, I just I really enjoyed this episode. Me too. Um, one, one of the things I've seen discussed online a little bit um, over the last couple of days is, you know, this season in particular, I think, has been really putting a spotlight and using stuff from the animated series a lot. And I think that's kind of because of the sort of polarizing nature of that show and because of the, the style of that show, the kinds of characters that were put forward in the animated series. There's some, there's some divided opinion on the merit of that, and some, some would like to see that pulled back a little bit. I know that. Um, that has not bothered me to this point. Uh, but I, if I have to, if there's something in this episode that I wish was toned down or not, I, I do think that the, the Pandronian character, the, the Bem uh, callback, yeah. that that character is so, the, the, I don't know, like the, using characters like the species that Eryx is from in that's the, one of the episodes last season, and, and Dr. Tan, the Cation, things like that don't bug me at all. I think that's cool. I'm all for it. I'm not a huge animated series fan, but bring it on. I'm totally down with that. The Pandaronian just, the, the concept of this alien who, like, can detach his body and his head's, like, floating around. Like, that's so silly, I think. And so, you know, in my at least subjective opinion, it has not held up over the years at all uh, with the Bam character. Uh, that's... It wasn't something that I was like super eager to see again, and I, I wasn't in love with with that character. Um, I'm gonna play devil, I think it, devil's advocate here. Go ahead, yeah, please. Characters like that, and and I, I don't know. I I'm fine with it. I'm not, I'm not really wanting them to go too overboard with like the um, animated series. Um, but it's it's nice that they're not just completely disowning it. I think it's this is another yeah. this is another animated show. Um, so you can't not right. kind of reference that, but um, I think you can only do this character in an animated kind of form because Absolutely. Um, just like visual effects wise, that in would be a, a nightmare. So I think this there's some uh, benefits to that, and we talked about it a few weeks. It's, it's um, this medium allows 
uh, then to do some really cool stuff um, with um, just like set design and then ships and things. So um, I like that. And I think that's kind of an extension of just some of the aliens they can do. It's just because um, just the nature of this medium allows to do pretty much throw the kitchen sink at it. So I, I would... Yeah. I don't know. I don't know where I feel with the animated series as a whole anyway, really. But um, I didn't really have an issue with the... Didn't bug you. Um, maybe a little bit. Maybe it was a little bit of braggy, like, look, look what we can do. But um, mm-hmm. I'm always wanting them to push the boundaries of... Uh, I mean, look what... Like, I'm sure people had um, same some issues with Odo, too. But that's a little bit different because he became a main character. But... Um. Yeah, I don't know. It was like the physics of it. The, yeah, yeah. The, the ability to yeah, mm-hmm. the shapeshifter idea I think is is better sold and more of a staple. I guess I, I don't know. I just think the the imagery of like the detached head floating around, like literally just like floating in the air. Like to me, like that's for me subjectively is like a little in, on the silly side and a little on the kids' cartoon. Uh, not grounded in any kind of uh, functional and that's just again completely that's a me thing um and i i like i said i'm all for referencing the animated series to 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 some degree and and some of the some of the things that they've called back to have been really cool and i've I've been uh kind of glad to see on, on a lot of levels as somebody who's not even like i said a huge fan of the show um but that that's maybe the first one in a while that kind of was like really we got to do this um but uh, I mean that's 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 yeah. nitpicking and that's a small potatoes thing. The, the the value of the episode far outweighs the, the, the yeah uh, small irritation that I have. With, uh, but because the, the sorry, Pantheronian. Again, now I'm coming back to your side. Maybe like, what does it do for the character? Like, what it does it change it at all? Or does it just make it uh, fresh and I new? Mean, new, new ye- unique? Ben, <laughs> or are we just the, the original trying to character reference? Ben, yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's that's a fair point. The original character of Bem was kind of a conniving, uh, nebulous. Like, can you trust him? Can you not? Is he a lone actor? Is he working with you? Like, I, and and this character is kind of a similar kind of a situation. Like, there's there's a there's a twist here with uh, our our uh, our drill sergeant kind of character that, that uh, is in this episode. Uh, so I don't know if it came from that. Like that this kind of twisty turny. Are they with us or are they against us? Idea called back to them, or if it was just that, oh, wouldn't it be cool if uh, we could we could use this deep cut animated series, you know, piece of continuity? Uh, I, I who knows? Um, maybe we'll find out someday in a Mike McMahon interview. But it, I'm 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 one of those people that I, while I love the continuity stuff, I love the callbacks, I love everything that this episode did with that stuff. I, I like it in in moderate doses too like I, I don't there's there's definitely a line that i feel like it can become a little much did we cross little... it this week no no i, I mean o- only on that one level i think for me subject like that's that's the one thing that i would point to and go man can we do something a little different um and th- th- i think there were other references to be had that if you wanted to make that character uh name your alien from across all these shows they, they kind of t- to be fair probably picked the one that might have bothered me the way that it, it did just because again of, of the, the visual nature of what they are and how they work and uh, that's that's one of those things that i'm kind of perfectly content to kind of leave to the animated series and lost the time and <laughs> never to be seen or heard uh, from again and that gets more complicated <laughs> when lower decks comes along yeah, and, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and brings it back to life um so again totally subjectively me and you know i don't begrudge anybody who loved the, the the seeing that costume again and you know the, the the joy that i'm sure you know people who love that show that that brought them i'm sure that there are a ton of people out there who were thrilled by it did you have a favorite simulation like a favorite callback favorite reference uh, uh situation that they had to... I, I, I i i there is a ton but i think all of them just have their merits in grounded and track like with tindy like she was uh that's that's calls back to TOS with Worf and um, TNG TNG sorry 
Um, mm-hmm. And the Borg stuff, again, that's we kind of talked about how I felt about Boimler in this episode. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. All of them, uh, I think, were great. Even some of the, um, like, Mirror Universe stuff, uh, I found myself laughing at. Uh, I like the, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Mirror Billups. Yeah, it's, uh, I think they were all pretty well pitched. I like the <laughs> um, the visual notes of the, the Rutherford Star Trek II. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that, that's really cool to see, just seeing the Monster Maroons and yeah. that old engineering costume and the, the, <laughs> yeah. the Constitution set design and stuff like that. That that, that was a cool thing to see, the, the specter of the gun uh, call back to the, the minimalist, mm, you know, yeah. corral was cool. They were all great. I, I think ethics, uh, the, the TNG one you were talking about with Tendi, is such a deep cut, like unexpected episode to choose. Yeah. As a, we're gonna we're gonna go back to this one. Like it's not a that, that's that's the kind of episode that I think would fit well in our undervalued series on on Trek Live proper uh, because it's an episode that I think has a lot of merit. It's pretty good, but it's not one that gets covered a lot. You know, it's not on top ten lists. It's not mm-hmm. you know it doesn't it doesn't make its way onto the pop culture kind of uh, discussions. Uh, so seeing it referenced is a that's the kind of stuff I really that I get a kick out of. Yeah, pick things like that that are less obvious. And if if a, if a new fan is watching this, like that's it's still tied into the character. Like she's a medical officer, so this is could yeah. potentially be something that she has to deal with day something to day. That could happen. Obviously, it's a very extreme yeah. um, uh, example, yeah. but um, situation. Yeah, so the that's that's kind of when I like that's when I like the. The references to be that balanced is whereas if a new person or if if, it, if they're not new to the new trek but they haven't really seen every episode a hundred times and they don't catch it and it's still it doesn't take away from this overall story that we're watching right now that's when i like it um but yeah i agree <clears throat> cool uh i think that about does it for this conversation um bill if you have anything else definitely speak up but um yeah we'll be back next week with another episode of course heading um talking about more lower decks and then also um another main show um trek live so uh you guys know that the drill the discussion doesn't have to stop here um twitter and our discord server um are full of great people who want to keep the discussion going so definitely um if you want to join the discord server uh bill can get you lined up with that um that being said thanks everybody for watching we'll see you guys next week take care everybody